Let's turn it around here. We're guys, they train all our crews. Uh, any crew going to the International Space Station gets trained in this building, and these guys do an awesome job. Yes, best, yes. best team in the world. Yes. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. All right. So that is the full-size mock-up of it. That is this right here. Exactly, sir. So that is Halo. Um, it was delivered, uh, the module built by Northrop Grumman. Uh, this one is Maxar uh, out in Palo Alto, California. Much of what you see in front of you with Gateway is heritage from the International Space Station. Sure. And so we're really excited to build on everything that's happened here in Texas. Of course, I went to Texas A&M. Flying the International Space Station over to the Gateway. So, um, we lost more. We need lots of science. The science community is really excited. Now it gives us access down to the surface. So it gives us access to the lunar surface and the human landing uh, system for being SpaceX and by Origin. And so we have about 130 active suppliers in the state. So a lot of, lot of activity going on on Orion. Um, the unique thing about Orion spacecraft, you've seen some of the spacecraft that go to space station. Uh, Orion is designed for deep space. And so it's the only spacecraft that can actually take crews to the vicinity of the moon and bring them home safely. Um, we are, this is our crew trainer. So we're doing a lot of crew training now for the Artemis II crew. We had an Artemis I test flight in 22 where we flew 1.4 million miles testing out a lot of systems around the moon. And um, furthest any human rated spacecraft we've ever gone, to Artemis 1. And Artemis 2 is coming up in the next year. So the spacesuits that we use for the International Space Station were built by a company called Collins Aerospace. They're about 45 years old. And they're not really suited for our lunar exploration cool. needs that, that we're using. Sure, you want to touch it? So, absolutely. This is Collins Aerospace Design. This will fly first on the space station. Yeah. Um, it's designed to work in either uh, lunar surface or in the space station. And Axiom Suit is designed also to work in either. Building the vehicle here, the front and center, so we're well, I want to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, leaders who are behind me that I'll be talking more about here momentarily. Uh, uh, leaders from our uh, university sectors, private sectors, public sectors. Uh, I want to thank uh, Vanessa Weish uh, for uh, her tour today, for the information, for the collaboration uh, that she's providing uh, with the Senate of Texas, with the private sector, with the, the public sector, every, everything uh, that she and NASA are doing. What we seek to be able to do in, in the future will uh, be even more expansive about what it will create here in our capabilities on Earth. Today, however, we are at NASA to announce the members of the Texas Space Commission, the members of the Texas Aerospace Research and Space Economy Consortium, 
and how we will secure the future of the moon on a mission that was directed from right here at the Houston facility. Now, with the Texas Space Commission, our great state will have leaders who are laser to establish space sports and so much more. As we return to the stars with a renewed zeal. With that as well, so it's, it's just great to double down on the resources we have, uh, specifically Texas A&M. I want to um, thank uh, Dr. Bonin and Ms. Huffman for their leadership in the House and the Senate. The entire legislature, the governor and his office, uh, like he said, this next generation of Texans will be act, act, actually, figuratively, and in reality, <laughs> reaching for the stars. And you're sitting right here in a room right now that demonstrates that. So with that, I thank you all for being here, and I uh, turn it over to Dr. Bonner. Uh, the focus that we have today is to ensure that we maintain uh, that position of leadership. And it's really important that those that are leaders in a given field are performing to the best of their ability. And that's what we're committing ourselves to doing as a state. And so when you see uh, little kids running around the Space Center, just keep in mind, those little kids are the future. And someday some of them are going to be sitting at a, a table like this uh, talking about things that we can only dream about uh, today. I especially want to welcome Governor Abbott, Speaker Phelan, and Representative Bonin for being here at Johnson Space Center and most importantly for your, your, your investment in the state of Texas and in aerospace and space exploration. Uh, we're so excited for what the Texas Space Commission will bring to the state of Texas and our flourishing aerospace industry. All of this enables the Artemis program where we will witness our nation's return to the lunar surface and this time establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon and preparations for human missions to Mars. We appreciate the state of Texas interest in STEM with programs like the Texas High School Aerospace Scholars Program. It is important to note that that program started under the direction of former Johnson Space Center Director George Agnew, an aerospace legend who passed away on Sunday, March 24th. They have a launch pad moment themselves to advance education. We have the Chancellor from Texas A&M here today. Uh, my challenge to him, uh, which will be made to other universities in the state of Texas also, let's have a space race unto itself in the education sector uh, with our universities competing to be who will be first uh, to have a degree program, undergraduate and maybe post undergraduate in space engineering. Thank y'all very much to NASA, and thank you to everybody involved in the entire space program across the great state of Texas.